and so told me that uh, as the initial set of things over here he gets the hatchlings or the fish hatchlings of a fish variety called as gifted tilapia, gifted tilapia. so uh, this is the second tank we we're speaking about the water from the previous tank which gets enriched with all the fish nutrients the fish excreta that enriched water tends to flow in here and this is a solar bed this is the asola, asola bed. bed. In continuation of the different uh, tanks that we have been seeing, there is the third tank that outstick tends to come out over here. Uh, this setup, uh, we would say, is like the massive one out here. And since this was more conceived as an R&D phase, this is where the maximum amount of money was invested. And these fishes tend to grow up within three months period. And these fishes, I was told that uh, the tilapia fish, they, three of them combined tend to weigh around one kilograms uh, sizes. And they are sold for 125 rupees a kilo. So everyone, what we are right now at the fourth tank. So what's going to happen over here is the water, the enriched water with all the fixed excreta and all the such good stuff that comes over here. What they're going to happen is uh, they're going to get aerated because the water that comes out of the fish, they are rich in ammonia. And as I was saying that the nitrates now get converted to something more enriched that is more suitable and suitable for all the plants. So in that realm, sir, what would you say would be the ingredients that you would add for this enrichment what all the ingredients that you we, would add we add uh, panchakavya mm -hmm. fish amino acid em effective microorganism so this happens to be the sixth and the final phase of all the enrichment that we have been doing over here hello everyone this is kishore well data engineer is my day job but today i'm here to meet mr shanmuga sundaram hello sir how are you so i've always been fascinated with the farming and the integrated farming stuff ever since i saw this program with amir khan on tv called as satyamev jayate they have been spoken highly in regard of the integrated farming and i've always picked the curious thanks to the almighty and the colleagues that i know of today i got the opportunity of this brilliant sir that he's been having this farm for a while right now and he has had some amazing investments and some amazing technologies that have been gone into it uh, even though it looks very traditional but it exonifies what simplicity can lead you to so to talk on that sir we're going to talk about the six tanks today so uh, sir has already told me about how this farm has been working so this entire integrated farm is split into six tanks and we're now first going to take care of the first tank over here so this is the first tank and it has a water capacity of uh, 100,000 liters and that's all being filled by the water pump over there it's being bore well and had been brought into this pump and sir told me that uh, as the initial set of things over here he gets the hatchlings or the fish hatchlings of a fish variety called as gifted tilapia. gifted tilapia so those have been got from the government of Tamil Nadu hatcheries and he gets them at 60 paisa per hatchling and that has been let into this water he says that uh, this water keeps on getting circled out wherein the water comes in gets pumped in on a daily basis of so much liters whereas when it exits out we get the enriched water out from this fishes and it goes out to those pipes that are out there and from those pipes it goes on to the second tank wherein it's gonna get hydrated and raised and we're gonna talk and see a little more of that okay and coming a little more to this tank out here uh, these hatchlings are initially for the one to two weeks period they have been fed a small fish kind of pellets with ammonia and nitrates which are enriched so those serve as a feed the fish tend to stay here for the three months period before they get transported out to the other tank that we're going to see later so that that's where you're going to see a lot of enriched tank and the water over here it serves as a nutrient rich water that's going to get circulated by the tanks over there that's going to flow out or they've told me that they have set it at a 1500 liters per day so uh, in this particular tank as i was speaking about the water gets pumped in at a higher rate and we want the water enriched water that have to be let out over here it's all works through gravity right now so there is a minimum investment that is needed for the percolation of this tank and it is said that for the 3000 hatchlings that we have uh, the initial investment for this would be around uh, initial investment amount sir uh, six lakhs six lakhs for the total investment but for this particular this tank this the uh, or uh, one lakh one lakh so one lakh or about hundred thousand rupees is what you would probably be spending around to set this up so this concludes the first tank and now we are going to go to the second tank to talk a little more. So uh, this is the second tank. We are speaking about the water from the previous tank which gets enriched with all the fish nutrients, the fish excreta. That enriched water tends to flow in here and this is? Asola bed. This is the asola, asola bed. bed. How many days sir it takes to grow? Every day. Every day. Every so day. Every, every day, day grow. 
So that's mm. where this is taken up out from here and it is used as a feed for which animals sir? All animals. Okay, so you can say fish, like fish, uh, fish uh, goat, uh, chuck, uh, chicken. Chicken. So you, as you can see here, this is a minimal investment of uh, 50,000 rupees as a one time so that the water get enriched, there's a constant supply of source of feed for all the lifestyles that grow within this integrated farming. So just to recap, we had the water from that bed, which was enriched with all the fish nutrients that comes in over here. It gets converted into the asola, which serves as a food for all the, the livestock time. for the second time. So yes. this is the second time. So the next piece of this work is going to be where we take all this food from the asola bed, which asola is indeed the food for the livestock. Then we take it over there and that's where and the livestock tend to feed on them. And we are going to use the excrement and all the things that come out of the livestock as a feed for the fish hatchlings which have now been teleported from this tank to the other tank in the three months period of time and I'll talk a little more out there once I head out there. So in continuation of the different tanks that we have been seeing there is the third tank that outstick tends to come out over here. Uh, this setup we would say is like the massive one out here and since this was more conceived as an R&D phase this is where the maximum amount of money was invested. So how much would you say we have invested money for this setup? Three lakhs. Three lakhs. Three About lakhs. three lakhs we would say roughly around 50% of the money that was needed for this entire R&D setup was set up over here. However sir do you think can it be done for a lesser money if done in a small scale farmer? Yes. Yes. Sir has been telling us repeatedly that this right now is a conceptual phase that's more like an experiment so most of the money tends to grow out there but eventually when we have to productionalize it it's going to be much more cheaper and the cost can be dramatically brought down to continue talking about what happens over here is so the water that got enriched from the asola pond that we saw that the smaller ponds that tend to flow out per hour at 1500 liters per hour they tend to come in over here and they tend to nourish the fish that have now started to grow up and these fishes tend to grow up within three months period and these fishes I was told that uh, the tilapia fish they three of them combined tend to weigh around one kilograms uh, sizes and they are sold for 125 rupees a kilo so what we are essentially looking at is in a three month period we have a harvest of 60 paise per fish which essentially convert to uh, one rupee 80 paise that in a six month period of time after this one time cast is set up you're going to get around uh, per ton is what the six months the sir has been telling me and that comes around around one and a half lakh. Coming to the casting aspect of this, I was talking in more in depth with Sir and he explained me what the cast entails. He told me, I believe I told you about the figure of about 300,000 which happens to be 3 lakhs in the Indian terms. He told me that the 3 lakh setup is just not for the shed that you see over here. It's more like a one-time cast for all the dogs, the poultry and the goat. It's a one-time cast. It is again in a self-sustaining model where the ducks reproduce, you get the hatchlings, they tend to grow up, you sell them out for meat. That is a continuous cycle that continuum keeps on happening this keeps the ecosystem the equilibrium so that one time setup is around uh, three lakhs and he told me that these fishes tend to grow in the three months period after the first three months that get incubated and hatched over there they tend to grow for the three months over in this pond and one kilogram of fish cost around 125 rupees uh, the market value of course you know is much higher since they are the suppliers that get sold for 125 rupees they said that for the three months period he is able to get about 125,000 or 1.25 lakhs and per year he is able to take about three months of four periods that is around five lakhs is what the outcome that you get so this seems to be a very sustainable and a very good economic model purely in terms of economics because what you're seeing is three time one three lakh of one time cost and that leads to into a, a five lakhs of return every year that seems a pretty good deal to me and also in addition to that you get the cost that we have still not attributed being the one from the ducks, the poultry, the eggs, the goat, the goat mills, the goat herd, those are all additional income that kind of gets supplemented to whatever the fish income that we tend to drive from this particular pond. So as we were talking, uh, we now have the fishes that are getting fed on a daily basis with all the nutrients with supply from all the livestock out there. From there in this, we have a collating period where the water tends to come in. And over here, what we try to do is we try to use the last of gravity to work in our favor. So the 1500 gallons, 1500 liters of water that gets pumped in what we tend to do is we kind of split them into two ways first is for the sediments piece of it the next is going to be the top layer of it. 
The reason being, you have some heavy stuff that's gonna come out from the birds that tend to stay in the lower bottom of the tank that we see here. And there's gonna be some good stuff that stays on the lighter part of it, as you could see in the video right now, that is gonna stay on top of it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get all this water from here and they all are gonna come in over here and they're all gonna get pushed out to the fourth tank. That's where in the, water, the contents of this water, along with the many other nutrients, are going to get increased and those are going to make any barren soil into a more fertile layer. So we're going to now go into the tank 4 and talk about the fertility process that what's going to happen out there. So everyone, what we're right now at the fourth tank, uh, as always, the investment side of things, you probably need just a plot of parcel of land and some tarpaulin to just make sure that the water that is getting coming out from the uh, fish excrement that we saw the fish pond that doesn't get seep out into others. So what's going to happen over here is the water, the enriched water with all the fixed excreta and all the such good stuff that comes over here, what they're going to happen is uh, they're going to get aerated because the water that comes out of the fish, they are rich in ammonia. Ammonium is rich with nutrients, but they cannot be used in the plants in the right way. So we need it to be converted into nitrates. So what is that process being done? So as we have all done in some sort of chemistry that we are going up. So ammonia being NH3, you just oxidize it with some oxygen. That is the process that's going on right here, which is the aeration process. So once the ammonia oxidizes, it trumps nitrate. Uh, we also have another term called as urea, which is used as the fodder for foods. So as you can see, it's all being organic, being done in a way which is more sustainable. And that is again pushed into another tank. I asked him the exact same question. Why is it that when you have something that is getting enriched over there what is the purpose of having a tank 4 and a tank 5 the, the, it was a very well thought explanation from sir so what he was telling me was once the ammonia gets converted into nitrate the nitrate is not going to be sufficient nutrients for the plants it needs to be enriched even further so the ammonia in the raw form how much ever you oxidize it's going to be only in the ammonia that's going to convert to nitrate but nitrate oxidation is not going to happen in that tank and as I was saying that the nitrates now get converted to something more enriched that is more suitable and suitable for all the plants. So in that realm, sir, what would you say would be the ingredients that you would add for this enrichment? What are the ingredients that you would we, add? We add uh, panchakavya, mm -hmm. fish amino acid, EM, effective microorganism. Thank you, EM sir. EM solution. So just to reiterate, as sir was saying, there are three types of uh, additional enrichments that are always natural in place that gets added over to the nitrate rich content that water that gets flown over here this also is in continuation uh, from the water that started from the fish hatchlings out there all the way this is all being done through gravity so there is no use of electricity out there it's very sustainable so what we're here seeing is another tributary of this particular plant with an integrated farming. So I'm sure there's so much poop out there from all the livestock that are getting covered. Not everything can be eaten by the fishes out there. So what happens is for all the livestock and the cows and the goats that were out there, so that go out on the field and they have that excrement, all that excrement is collected on a day around 50 kilograms of waste and those are come and put over here. They have accumulated, they undergo their process, they do their magic and then you happen to get some biogas that gets emanated from these tanks and this goes and gets collected in a balloon-like structure out there that serves as a reserve cylinder and from that cylinder that gas is opened and used as a cooking gas so in this way uh, probably we all have started in our chemistry books again the LPG that reduces and combusts and produces methane which is toxic to the ozone layer it leads to the global warming and cause much more problem that is now under control where the combustion that happens over here this leads and yields lesser methane and lesser combustible gases overall protecting the environment so this happens to be the sixth and the final phase of all the enrichment that we have been doing over here sorry i'm getting distracted by the ducks out there they're all jolly and happy right now so what's going to happen right here now is the all the enriched uh, nitrate rich water and the supplements that we saw though ten, that water tend to get accumulated in this small kind of pond so told me this is a well uh, i asked him wouldn't this water contaminate with the groundwater he told me that this is by nature a uh, nutrient enriched soil and this is not gonna destroy the ecosystem as you can see what is the ecosystem made of it's mostly the bird droppings the plants and everything that's exactly what you have over here so in a sustainable way what we're going to see is we're going to have a motor that's going to pump the water out from this particular well and it's going to be sent out all the way to the banyan tree field that are out there so what that does in the process is the f f soil which was fertile it now gets enriched to multiple levels that turns out to be a better yielding banyan farms an absolute pleasure to stay in this blissful ecosystem 
this is a banyan plantation sir tells me that this is equivalent to a rainforest so sir was telling me that this particular plot of land that we see over here has been accredited and vetted by icai indian council of agriculture research from delhi 